Welcome to my tutorial on Git. To begin, we'll be using GitHub to create a new repository. So before we get started with that, let me tell you a little bit about the benefits of code versioning. The key element of code versioning that will benefit your development project is having a complete, almost moment-to-moment -moment history of your code project meaning that you can rewind to any point in time to recover a corrupted file, to undo some changes that you've made, to pull out a bug or to discover a bug or find out when a bug was put in the code and then be able to address it. These are all fantastic features of code versioning. The other benefit of code versioning is when you're working in teams, whether small or large, having multiple people working on the same project means that you need to have a way to easily merge those changes without looking through your code line by line trying to figure out what to keep and what to cut. It is possible that multiple people will make the same change or similar changes to code at the same time and we need to have an easy way to go through those changes and figure out which ones to keep. As well as, of course, when two people are adding new features that impact the same file, we need to know which lines were added by each individual so that we know which elements to keep. We may keep all or we may keep only some. So these are some of the key benefits to code versioning. And as a professional developer, you will be relying on code versioning in every single project that you've ever created or ever will create. So let's get started. Here we have GitHub. You can go ahead and join it for free. Create your own username. As a student, I'd recommend that you create something professional so that you could actually put it on your resume and that employers can then see your contributions to public projects. But in the meantime, I'm not gonna show you how to set up your own username. You guys can figure that out. So when you first log into GitHub, this is what you're gonna see or something similar to this. You won't have any repositories listed initially, but eventually you will. So in the meantime, first you can either start a project that's gonna give you the add repository or go up here to this little plus symbol to that drop down box and choose new repository. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, they take you to the same page. So here you have a create a new repository. You can either start as the owner if you belong to an organization, you can choose one of the organizations to be the owner of that repository. You can only choose a private repository if you are an organization, I believe. So first start out with some repository name. I'm just going to name mine tutorial. If I choose private, I have to pay for it. I'm not going to pay for it. So public realizes with readme that doesn't really matter. What really matters here is the git ignore file. We're going to talk a little bit more about the git ignore file in a later tutorial, but for right now just know that the best thing to do is start with a git ignore that matches the type of project you're going to be building. So if you are building a C++ project or do they have C Sharp in here? Uh, you can see they've got Action Script, Drupal, all sorts of other things, right? I'm going to demonstrate using Unity. So I'm going to go all the way down to Unity. All right, so the key here is that that type of the gitignore file will initialize with a certain set of files that we don't want to synchronize into the repository. That's the most important reason to use a gitignore is that it's going to ignore those temporary files that get created by Visual Studio, or in this case by Unity, or whatever other IDE that you're using that matches the language that you're using the gitignore for. So once we've done that, you can add a public license if you want. I'm going to leave this off for now because I don't really care. And we're going to create a repository. So now you can see here, this is going to be your repository. You can see that we have the number of commits to the repository. There's only been one because we're in the initial state one branch, zero releases, only one contributor for now. The branch that we're on is the master branch, which is going to be the primary branch, which is going to be sort of your official branch of your software. Here we have our git ignore file with these text-based files. You can actually click on them and look directly at them. Okay, so here's some tricky little things in here. You can see that library folder, temp folder, obj folder, build folders, assets folders are all being ignored. And these are things that will not be synchronized into the project. You can also see here Visual Studio type stuff, .sln files, these are temporary files, we don't care about them, .suo files, well they're not really temporary files, but they're custom for your machine, so we're gonna ignore all those for now. All right, so all of these types of files here are simply just gonna be ignored by our repository as we synchronize things. 
But we'll get into that a little bit more detail later as we talk about where the git ignore file belongs. All right. So that's it. We've now created our initial GitHub repository. We have a single commit in there. Now we got to move on to actually using it. Follow along with our next tutorial as I'm going to break this down into individual tutorials so it's easier for you to jump back to the important one and you don't have to sort through a bunch of other stuff.